In this lesson, I'll show you how to use the sign test for dependent paired samples. The question reads, suppose we are investigating a new drug hypothesized to lower systolic blood pressure. We select a random sample of subjects and record their resting systolic blood pressure at baseline. Each subject is then given the new drug and resting systolic blood pressure is measured again after four weeks of drug treatment. The data is shown in the following table. And based on the data, does it appear that the new drug lowers systolic blood pressure? Take a look at the table carefully. The first column tells us the amount of subjects. We have 10. The baselines are recorded in the second column. And the third column tells us the post-treatment numbers. Before we start, the sign test is a non-parametric alternative to the t-test or t-test for paired data. Non-parametric tests are used whenever the data isn't normally distributed. Since we weren't told in the question that this is normally distributed, we then use the sign test over the paired t-test. In the sign test, we focus on differences between measurements, as you would with the t-test, except we don't care about the magnitude of those differences, only their direction, plus or minus. Let's take a look at that data and determine which rows represent plus or minus direction. To get the direction, we subtract 166 with 138. That would give us a positive difference, so we write down plus. Subtracting the post with the base for subject 2, again plus, the difference is 15. Another plus value for subject 3, there's no difference for subject 4. Subject 5 and 6 are both negative, and the rest are positive. The sign test is based on the binomial distribution. Remember, the question asks, does the new drug lower systolic blood pressure? If so, our differences would be positive. There are a total of 10 different scores, with 7 out of those 10 having a plus sign. Since we expect to see 5 plus signs and 5 negative signs, we have a binomial distribution with an n value of 10 and a pi value of 0.5, 50% chance being positive and 50% chance being negative. The table formed when you have an n value of 10 and a probability of 0.5 is shown on your screen. Of course, these values can be calculated on your own using the formula also shown on the screen right now. Now, since we ended up with seven plus signs, the question of interest is, how likely is it to observe as many as seven or more successes out of 10 when the probability of success is 0.5? What we will do is write down P, where X is greater or equal to seven, is equal to P at X is equal to seven, plus p at x is equal to 8, plus p at x is equal to 9, plus p as x is equal to 10. Taking these values from this table, this number, for example, is equal to 0 0.1172, this one is 0 0.439, and so on. I'm taking these from here we end up with a probability that x is greater or equal to 7 being equal to 0 0.1719. Before we can interpret this number, let's write down our null and alternative hypothesis. When it comes to non-parametric tests, the hypothesis is based on the equality of the medians. So the mean is not what's in question. We'll write down the median of the baseline, and the median is represented with this tilde at the top of mu is less than or equal to the median of the treatment. And I'll write down P for post-treatment. The alternative is the opposite of this, where we have the median of B is greater than that of the post-treatment. Okay, from here, we can start to interpret the following. We can say that because P at X being greater or equal to 7 is greater than 0 0.05. We do not reject the null hypothesis. Do not reject the null. And for this reason, there's insufficient evidence at 0 0.05 significance level to conclude that the new drug lowers the systolic blood pressure. Now, what about that difference of 0? 
we chose not to count it as a plus. Sometimes we may choose to count a zero difference as 0 0.5. So in our case, we would have had 7.5 pluses out of 10, and this changes the p-value slightly. Because if it was 7.5, you don't include x is equal to 7. You would just include numbers after that. The sum of these p-values would therefore be 0 0.0547, that's close to 0.05, so it's marginally sufficient. And one other thing, if the alternative hypothesis was written as a two-tailed test, remember we would have to multiply the p-value by two. Now ours was written as greater than or less than, so we didn't have this problem. Some more notes to consider about the sign test are shown on your screen. Once again, thank you for watching, and if you found this helpful, please leave us a comment below and we would appreciate a thumbs up.